Hi, today we're going to have a look at Dark Shadows Payload Bay and how the deployment mechanism works. The nose cone's got a fiberglass shell uh, on the outside and because we didn't have a lot of room down in the lower sections we've put the ca uh, HD camera in the top of it. That's just held in by four screws which we can take out. And then you can slide the shell out. And underneath you can see the camera is held in just with a bit of foam to keep it lightweight and a piece of tape just over the top to, to keep it nice and secure. The nose cone is equipped with a pair of uh, grapple arms that are hinged, that are free to swing open. While they're inside the payload bay, like this with a parachute between them, uh, the bo uh, body tube stops them from opening and the parachute stops them from folding inwards. Now you'll notice that they overlap, that's so that we only need one attachment point. So when this pulls that also holds this one in place. Uh, this wire loop just simply hooks around the servo horn uh, which keeps the whole thing in place. Now one of the advantages of this is uh, because it's positively retained by the servo motor, we don't actually need a lot of friction on this part of the uh, nose cone to keep it in place like you do with conventional uh, piston ejection uh, methods. So this is very free to move in and out, but because it's positively uh, retained within the payload bay, uh, there's no chance of drag separation of the nose cone. So once it gets ejected, um, and there's no more uh, pressure from the walls of the body tube, these are just free to uh, swing open, parachute falls out. And then you'll notice there's a couple of lips here around which we hook uh, rubber bands that are tied up here on the body tube that help push the whole thing out. Inside the body tube you can see the pair of uh, rubber bands here, they just have a bit of uh, tubing on them to keep them uh, nice and neat. Uh, they're just held to the tube through this a hole in the wall you can see them pop out here. Uh, there's a piece of wire just holding them in place so they can't slip through. Uh, this allows us to switch the rubber bands uh, should we need to change the tension or if one of them breaks we can easily replace it. Just below the grapple arms is our uh, electronics package with the servo motor right here. And the way that loop fits in is just through that hole and hooks over to the um, servo horn to keep it in place. So the rubber bands are trying to push uh, the top section out, but the motor keeps everything from moving. Here we have the electronics package. Uh, basically consists of a fiberglass tube with a couple of centering rings. These in, they're made out of uh, balsa wood with a couple of layers of fiberglass either side. And there's also a PVC ring that uh, has threads cut into it so we can secure that inside the payload bay. Um, on the outside of the fiberglass tube is a, a set of sleeves made out of pet plastic uh, that's actually removable. Uh, and each one of those pockets has a different piece of electronic kit in it. So over here we've got an altimeter one. Um, we had to take it out of its case because it was fairly limited in terms of space. A uh, couple of lithium polymer batteries and a screw switch that uh, makes sure we've got a secure connection under the high G loads. Uh, over here is our servo timer. Now for these launches we were using the brake wire option rather than the G-switch uh, because we were handling the rocket um, uh, on the pad and we didn't want it to trigger accidentally. Over here is a Z-Log altimeter uh, that records uh, barometric pressure and uh, over here is the servo motor with the hole for the wire uh, from the grapple arms. You can actually see the servo motor in there. Um, these other holes are just used for passing um, the shock cord through that attaches back into the to the main rocket. Here we have the top of the pressure chamber. On top of that is a PVC ring that's been glued to the carbon fiber uh, and has a set of uh, tapped holes that allows us to then screw the rest of the um, payload bay to the top of it. In the very top uh, we have that's filled with epoxy here and there's a hole going this way and another hole going sideways that has a pin in it. The end of the shock cord just has a loop uh, and anytime we want to disconnect the rest of the payload bay from the uh, pressure chamber we can just pull the pin out and then disconnect the shock cord. Next comes the electronics package and that just slides over the shock cord and the top of the pressure chamber fits inside this fiberglass tube. 
The lower centering ring sits up against the PVC tube and that helps support all of the electronics that's in here against the G-forces. Um, over the top of that we just slide the rest of the body tube and then that gets screwed down at the appropriate holes. I just don't have them lined up at the moment. So here we've hooked the um, rubber bands onto the grapple arms and put the parachute in and then it's just a matter of compressing it. You can see it's quite a bit of force and then we just hook it over the servo motor. Here you can see the wire from the grapple arm hooked over the servo arm. Uh, it's actually hooked over the center of the uh, axle to provide maximum strength. Okay, so let's have a look how this works. We'll turn on the screw switch. And then we have to wait until it's armed. And it's now armed. So when we break the brake wire, about six seconds later, the parachute should deploy. And so here it is from a different angle. And after it's armed, you can now see it's armed. And when we break the wire, six seconds later, parachute will deploy. And you can see the parachute's fallen out. I've got a rubber band on it to make it easier for filming.